Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. On today's show, we are going to build OpenCV 4 with CUDA support for the NVIDIA Jetson Nano Developer Kit. There are several reasons you may want to build OpenCV from source. Some of the applications that you use may require a certain version. That's one reason. Another reason might be that you are developing a new application and want the latest and greatest. A third reason is that you may want CUDA support. There are several resources on the web that can help you. The Canonical 4 series build is from NVIDIA itself. This is from one of the engineers. I will leave references for all of these in the article linked in the description below. So in the JEP repository, we see install OpenCV 4.1.1. This is frequently updated with the latest version. Just take a look at it. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty much just compile it and go. You'll notice here that they use the CUDA architectures of all the Jetsons. 5.3 is for the Jetson Nano and Jetson TX1. 6.2 is the Jetson TX2. And 7.2 is Xavier. Another resource is Michael DeGans. You probably recognize this from the Jetson forums. He's someone who knows what's up. And I like his talk. If we go to the nano build OpenCV repository, you can see that there are scripts here to build OpenCV, and that's version four. You can pass as a command line parameter the version of OpenCV that you want to build. And you can see that this is a much more formal script. Now, if you want to build a 3x version, I suggest you go here. Now, why would you want to do that? It turns out that some applications require 3.x. So things like Cafe, I may be mistaken, but I believe YOLO also requires 3.x. This is a pretty excellent explanation of all the flags that you would set, especially for a Cafe build. If you are doing any type of machine learning on the Jetsons, you should read this blog. It's way excellent. And now the question you ask is, why does Jetson Hacks have an OpenCV4 build? The answer is, there's a secret build flag, and I want to share that with you. What the build flag allows you to do is build a package that includes everything in the library. You can take that package and more easily install it on other machines. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to share one of those built packages. I should be able to make a video and a blog post on how to use it. Let's switch over to our webpage. On the Jetson Hacks Nano account on GitHub, there is a repository named Build OpenCV. Let's clone that repository. And switch over to that repository's directory. Let's take a look at our build script. Get ready for the magic flag. This script is very similar to the previous build OpenCV scripts that we've done over the years. We are going to build for the Jetson Nano. So our architecture is 5.3. We are going to install it in slash user slash local. We are going to put our OpenCV source directory at the home directory. And then here's a little tip. If you are trying to build this on an SD card, you should set the number of jobs to one. That tells make to only use one job when it goes to build this. Nothing's built in parallel. If you are compiling on a USB drive, it's better to use some parallel threads. We just set it to the number of CPUs. On the Nano, this is four. And then here's the magic part. Package OpenCV. If we set the package OpenCV flag on, it will build a binary with the installer that will install the package. It's all packed into one thing. It's about 50 megabytes or so. And that way you don't have to rebuild it every time you go to a new machine. Life becomes simple. By default, we leave that on. It only takes a couple of minutes to package after you have built OpenCV. Down here, we install our dependencies. Since we are building for Python, we just build for Python 2 and Python 3. We add in GStreamer support. And then we go and grab the OpenCV repositories. 
almost all the OpenCV releases have little niggles with them that you have to take into account. In 4.1.1, there's an issue with the Eigen library. So we fixed that up. That was the same issue we had up here with this OpenGL header patch. If you compile with OpenGL on, then you need to apply this patch. I believe the issue is Jetson specific. After the dependencies are loaded on the machine, then we run CMake. You can see here all of our different flags. We are building in release with CUDA on. We set our architecture. We use fast math, video for Linux, GStreamer. We use Qt here and OpenGL, OpenCV, Python 2, Python 3. And if we include the package flag, that's what this environment variable expands to. After CMake, we start building. You should use a swap file with this build. L4T 32.2.1 has that included. When you go to make this, you will run into an issue with memory. More than likely, you will run out of physical memory and fill up your swap file. There will be some thrashing going on and eventually it will restart itself. That's what this second make down here does. We just run one job and typically it's in the Python area that this runs into issues. Once it's through building, then we install. After the installation, we pack it up and then we run a sanity check here with Python. Let's go back up to the readme. Here's a build instruction to use. Let's grab that. And now because memory is tight, we'll close down this browser. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to run the system monitor. Now we're ready to start our build. Password. And off it goes. This will probably take about two and a half hours if you're building on a USB drive. Installation complete. In real time, that was about two and a half hours. You can see here on the screen some of the results of the build. Remember that we saved them to a log file. We want to make sure that OpenCV4 does not get overwritten by other installers. So we place in slash user slash local. Let's reboot the machine just to make sure everything cleans up. Okay, we're back. Let's take a look at our build. Let's open up Python. Let's import CV2. That's the OpenCV library. Four point one point one. Will wonders never cease? We can also get the build information, of course. This gives us more information about our build. The version, CMake version that we used, hardware features, the command lines that were used for the C and C++ compilers, linker flags, things of that nature. Here are the OpenCV modules that we built. This will give you a sense of the CUDA functions available. We see up here, CUDA filters, CUDA optical flow, CUDA warping. And then we used Qt as our GUI. 
gooey, gooey, gooey. Then we have some information about our media I.O., our video I.O. You can see that we include GStreamer support and video for Linux. The CUDA version that we're using is 10.0 and our GPU architecture is 5.3 and that's for the Jetson Nano and Jetson TX1. We're using CUDNN and that's version 7.5.0. We built support for Python 2 and Python 3. Let's get out of this. There is a simple sanity check here. The program is written in C++. Let's compile it. We'll grab this. Wander over to the examples directory. Paste it in, compile it. And let's run it. All that should happen is that we get a camera output. There we are. And the microphone's in the way. But you know who else is here? Yes. Bruce is here. Well, let's close this up. And then we have a simple application that does canny detection in Python. Let's run this in Python 3. Okay, it looks like it's delayed about, I don't know, three or 400 milliseconds. I noticed that on all the builds, whether it was from this script or the others. And if you are unfamiliar with this application, the top left corner is the original RGB input. We convert that to black and white, and then we run a Gaussian blur on it. And then we convert that into our edge detection. It's interesting because you can actually see the gills. <laughs> you can also set the detection up. You can see the thresholds change here a little bit. They go from very silly to almost nothing. That helps you with lighting conditions and such. It's up, alive, and running. I hope that you find this video useful. You should be able to now go in and take the script and modify it for your purposes. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, please subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.